religious folks get upset and all bent out of shape and, and worked up into a, a lather uh -huh. and get their panties all in a bunch when <laughs> God is not talking to them. Come on, come on. But people who have a relationship with God mm -hmm. and understand his loving kindness mm -hmm. and who he is and how he moves mm -hmm. can still be faithful yes. even when God is silent. Come on. We thank God for what he's doing in this ministry. We thank God for each and every last one of you. We are across multiple social media yes, platforms. Yes, uh -huh. we, we have our very own ministry website, saveandserving.org. Yes. And if you choose to follow us on a specific social media, mm -hmm. we all would like to ask you to like, follow, and share with your friends and family. Because amen. somebody needs to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. So thank you for joining us here amen. on our local radio station, <laughs> WJESUS. Because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost, Ghost party, party don't, don't stop. stop. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to have an opening prayer. Yes. And then we're going to push forward. But why do we have Bible study? Mm -hmm. I say this each and every week to reiterate and reinforce mm -hmm. what this really means and, and why we do it. There's yeah. three reasons why we do it. Number one is to increase our biblical literacy. Yes. Number two is to elevate our spiritual consciousness Amen. about who God is. Yes. And number three is because we want to implement intelligent faith intelligent. with God. Yes. That's Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. Tonight we want to discuss mm -hmm. continuously part 18 of our Bible study series uh -huh. entitled, Is God Your First or Last Option? Yes, yes. Part 18, subtopic tonight. We're going to discuss the difference between religion about God mm -hmm. versus relationship with God. That's good. Amen? Yes. Amen, amen. Tonight's lesson is going to be a showdown, uh -huh. a knockdown mm -hmm drag out if you will uh-huh between religion yeah and relationship all right and i'll start it off by saying this christianity is not a religion uh-huh it is absolutely a relationship yes. amen amen god amen Father God, we do thank you tonight for Bible study. We thank you for this time, oh God, of just diving into your word, oh God. I pray that tonight you will open up our understanding, oh God. Yes, open up Lord. our heart that we may receive, God. Open up our ears that we can yes, hear Lord. you, God. Open up our eyes that we may <laughs> see you in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, we yes, commend Lord. this service into your hands, oh God. We decrease that you increase, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, oh God. Lord. And for everybody, God, on the uh, social platform, oh God, tonight that are participating in this Bible Bible study, I ask that you would bless them, oh God. I ask that you would meet their needs in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord, I just want to send out a special prayer to uh, Dieta Parker and the Parker family, oh God. Father, that you would comfort them, oh God, and that you would touch Mother Parker as she lies in the hospital bed, God. Father, your will be done. You blessed her to see a hundred years old, oh God. So we just ask that yes. your will be done in their lives, oh God. Thank comfort you, them, comfort ye your people, oh God, yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus, oh God. And to those who are grieving, oh God, because they've lost some a loved one, God. And we know we're coming up on Mother's Day, God, where a lot of people have lost their parents, oh God, or lost their mother or auntie, oh God. I just ask that you would comfort them, God. I ask that you would hold them up during this season, oh God, in yes, the name Lord. of Jesus, name oh of God. Jesus. Fill that void in their life, I pray in Jesus' name. And it is so. And let everyone that can say amen. 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 Praise, amen. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me pray also for Donald Pope. I see your, your message there. Father God, Lord Jesus, you said before we pray, you hear us. And while we're yet yes, speaking, Lord. you will answer. So we lift up Donald Pope today, God, praying for a kidney donor, God. We ask, oh God, that you would hear him speedily, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Move him to the top of the list, oh God. Give yes, him Lord. favor, God. For the month of May is grace, oh God. The fifth month is grace. The number five means grace, God. So we pray for double grace upon Donald Pope's yes, life Lord. today, God. Move him to the top of the list, we pray yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Name and of it Jesus. is so in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 you, amen. It is done in Jesus' Jesus' name. Amen, Hallelujah. Sonia. We'll pray for that afterwards. Um, but I see you. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. God is able. That's right. We'll That's touch right. and agree with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to move forward with religion versus relationship with God. 
We're going to deal with three questions. Question number one, is relationship and religion the same thing? Question number two, how can we tell the difference in people regarding whether they just have religion or whether they have relationship? And question number three, what happens when you have been touched by the presence of the Lord? All right, all right. We're going to delve into this tonight, and hopefully someone is going to be encouraged and inspired tonight. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's something in here that's going to cause us to see from another perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's what Bible study does, particularly when it's interactive like this. You know, you, you have the ability to say, hey, this is what I think, or this is what has happened to me, or this is what I'm hoping for. Yes, yes. So we're getting ready to dive into that first question. Yes, and our God. topic tonight is religion about God versus relationship with God. Yes. So question number one. Uh -huh. Is religion and relationship the same? The same thing, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to say it like this. Well, I better not say it like this because I was, I was being a little smart. I was just like, well, is boyfriend, having a boyfriend in marriage the same? <laughs> 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 oh, praise God. But nevertheless, um, <clears throat> religion and relationship, I would say, is not the same. Yeah. I would say religion is a practice. Religion is something that um, we do out of tradition. It's something that we, it's programmed. Yeah. Religion and relationship, I'm kind of stuck, y'all, because in one aspect, I want to say it can be the same, but the difference is it's relationship. Yeah. Because relationship, it, 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 it causes change. It causes, it causes a new growth in life when there's a relationship versus a, re versus a religion. Yeah. Because sometimes with religion, it's like the Bible says that you're forever learning but never mm -hmm. able to come to the knowledge of the, the truth. truth. Yeah. But when you have relationship, you're growing in God and you're That's becoming, right. you're coming into the knowledge of truth because That's you right. have a relationship with God and because you're communicating with him, not only doing religion services, which is Sunday and Wednesdays for most folks, but relationship says Monday through Monday, I'm going to talk to you, God, all day long, Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm not just in it only on Sundays and on Wednesdays, but I'm serving you, God, with my whole heart and with my life. Because how many know that holiness is a lifestyle? That's right. Praise God. And so you have to develop a relationship. And as we get dig further in, there's a scripture that Pastor had pointed out in our in our lesson. It talks about how our, how our traditions have made the word of God of none effect. Because yeah. so so many times I was telling Pastor Mark even 7, that we have to be careful. Because sometimes we get so caught up in the work of the Lord that we forget about the Lord, the Lord of, of the work. work. Yeah. And that's the importance. And a lot of times people feel good that and they take pride in. That they go to church on Sundays and they there they on the usher board or they're in the choir, but their hearts are far from God. You know, and why do I say that? I say that in a way because if you run into them, if it's a bad day or they are they just don't, and you're not having it, they may cuss you out. <laughs> They may tell on you. They may talk about you. And we don't want that as becoming saints yeah. of God. We ought to be better than that. We are not to be cussing. We are not to be gossiping about people. But yeah. because why? Because we have a relationship with Jesus. And when we yeah. read in the Bible, he said, these things ought not to be in us as we grow in God. And so as you're growing in God, relationship is different. It's just like when we come into church and sometimes you feel like, why is it taking so long for people to praise God? Well, some people, when they when there's a relationship with God, they 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 started praising God at home while they were getting ready and can't wait to get to the house of God and to just keep the praises going. Yeah. But people who do not take the time to worship and praise God when they come to church, they do have to be uh rattled up and cheered up and cheered on before they can get their praise on. But a lot of times if you've already prayed and had your praise on at home, we don't have to uh, pump you up. You already pump glory to yeah. God. So there is a difference between just having religion. You know how some people say, oh, girl, I have to put my religion down because I, <laughs> no, we don't put down religion. You but, might not be able to find it when you go exactly. back. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why we have relationship with God. And that's why we have to understand that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, and, 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 and all the other attributes that goes along with the fruit of the spirit, because that's who we ought to be trying to be. In Philippians 2 and 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so that's what relationship yeah. is about, is having the mind of Christ. 
Amen. And, and thank God for religion. Don't get me wrong. Religion is good because that's where you get your start. Right. That's but right. then there's a difference because you continue to grow in God and then you become into relationships. So religion can have its own religion. A relationship has to have a have a, a period of growth where you're growing in God and you're constantly growing. And that's why the scripture talks about going from faith to faith and glory, glory to, to glory, glory, because that's what yeah. relationship is about. But when you're religion, you're just kind of at that standstill. Nope, this is how we do it. We're not, we're, we're not giving, we're not thinking outside the box. No, we're going to stay in this box. And, Stuff and, like and, Chuck. And, exactly. <laughs> so we have to be careful with religion, you know, because that's a lot right. of people that's are religious, right. but, but people don't have relationship. And that's why you, you see where people still do what they do. They still go into clubs. They still shacking up. They still doing all mm -hmm. kind of things mm -hmm. because they're, they're stuck in that relationship religion yeah. and don't want to let go and say lord no here here is all of me god i want to do right before you and so you have people that say well i know god well what do you know god you know what what, what, what does that mean you know and it's not to be judgmental because the yeah. bible said you will know people by their fruit, fruit that they bear so you can't argue with the god with god but a lot of times when you quote those scriptures people be like are oh, you just being judgmental no baby i'm not being judgmental i'm trying to help you I'm trying to help you grow. Our bishop used to say all the time, we must grow that others can grow. And yeah. so our greatest our, our greatest uh, testimony is the life that we live before others. And right. so again, we must grow that others can grow. And so we yeah. have to come into relationship and, and let go of just knowing about God, but know God. Amen. Because we all know about God, I think. But let's know God. Let's right. know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says in Mark 7 and 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Mother Dorothy Sampson Hamilton, who joined us just a couple of minutes ago. Right. Shout out to Sister Crystal on Instagram, who joined us just a couple of minutes ago. Right, Thank Crystal. God for your attendance tonight. <laughs> Tradition is it, it's, it's, it's what keeps a lot of people stuck in religion. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and what it does is it keeps you from opening up to the relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and people who are stuck in religion don't understand that I don't have relationship. Mm -hmm. I remember a joke. I'm just going to give you a piece of it where a Jehovah's Witness knocked on a couple's door and the couple, uh, the, the, the one lady opened the door and the Jehovah's Witness, they got to the end of their statement and, and, and you know, they didn't want to be bothered, of course. The lady didn't want to be bothered and she tried to close the door on the Jehovah's Witness and the lady stuck her foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And as she stuck her foot in the door, she said, do you know Jesus? Mm -hmm. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. And and the lady in the house stood still for a moment. And then she released her foot and walked away. Mm -hmm. and, she, the, and so wow. the wife went back and told her husband, mm -hmm. well, these were Jehovah Witnesses. They were asking, and she asked me if I had a relationship with Jesus Christ. She said, well, did you tell them I've been on the deacon board for 30 years? She said, no, she didn't ask me that. <laughs> said, did you did you tell her that you sing in the choir for the last 20 years? She said, no, she didn't ask me that. Mm -hmm. The question was, do you have a relationship yeah, with Jesus? With Jesus? Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to go back to our question number one tonight. Yeah. Is religion and relationship the same thing? First mm -hmm. and foremost, Jesus didn't come to start a religion. That's right. He came to have a relationship with us. Yes, that's good. Hallelujah. That's, good. Hallelujah. That, that's, that's why he came. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the traditions of old time religion mm -hmm. have no signs in them. Mm -hmm. No wonders in them. Yeah. They don't have any authentic testimonies. Mm -hmm. You telling me you've been on the deacon board for 30 years is not like saying, I know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because here's what he did for me. He was water when I was thirsty. Yeah, he took yeah, my marriage that totally was on the rocks and put it back in a place of stability yes, again. Yes. He, 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 he put some, some, some breath back in my body uh -huh. when I had asthma attacks. Uh -huh. he, he, he brought me back from a stroke. He brought me back from a heart attack. Yes, he took cancer yes. and, and moved it, removed it out of my body. Uh -huh. That's called relationship. relationship. How can you know Hallelujah. that Jesus mm -hmm. is, is Jehovah's Sabaoth, yes. our strong deliverer, mm -hmm. if he's never delivered you from nothing? Come on, come on. That's right. That's if right. he never delivered you, then you got religion. Come on, come on. But if he's done something for you, that's the beginning of an authentic, intimate relationship. Yeah. Because now it's like 
when you're in a marriage mm -hmm. you can look back and say well we used to be like this now we're like this mm -hmm. in other words re religion brought it together mm -hmm. but relationship mm -hmm. drew you close yeah hallelujah question number two says how can we tell the difference in people meaning religion versus relationship and mm. i believe we hit on that in question number one but you you see a big difference in people i feel just by their lifestyle that yeah. they live you know like a lot of people i, I use this one person um we were going and i'll never forget at uh high school my freshman year we were playing basketball and i had this friend that just cussed like a soldier <laughs> and i'd be like wow you know they, they just got a potty mouth you know mm -hmm. and i've never been a cusser at all really you yeah. know so i'm like uh i don't like all that cussing but one day we all decided to walk home and so me and my other friend you know we all knew the old church song so we started to sing a song uh because we had to walk a long ways y'all from school to home from high school to home and we started singing this song traveling shoes lord got on my traveling shoes <laughs> and then the girl who cussed all the time she started singing with us and i was like wait i said how you know this song she's like please i grew up in church i gotta go to church every sunday we she said i'm at ypcw she said please she said i go to church all the time and i'm like wow i said so you one of those kids who feel so sheltered that you gotta act like the world you know right, right, when, right. when you're not with mom and dad you know but thanks be to God, she uh, we, we're in contact to this day. She moved to Mississippi, but she is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's just good to see that what the Bible says, that if you train a child up in yes. the way they should go when they get older, they shall not depart from it. And That's so right. I'm saying all that to say is that at that time in high school, she just had religion because she hadn't come in to know God. Yeah. But she could tell you the Bible. She could tell you the songs of the Bible. Yeah. She could tell you anything you need to know in the Bible because she was prepped from a from a, a, a child up about, you know, in Sunday school, learning scriptures and what have you. But she yeah. didn't have that relationship yeah. piece yeah. that causes that causes change. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's how you, you tell the difference in the people, um, you know, because people will say sometimes like, oh, you know, I know she goes to church, but, you know, um, she seems to act a little different, you know, mm. you know, and I don't know if you guys have ever been uh, compared when, when, when worldly people want to try to compare saints, you know, yeah. that that's a pet peeve of mine. But but yeah. but their truth is they see a difference. That's right. You know, they, they really see a difference. So that brings up question. Well, why is this person acting like this? And you don't act like this. Right. Why? But we also have to have room to grow. That's right. You know, so we're not trying to be so hard tonight where we're saying that people cannot have room to grow because we we were once there amen right. let's not forget where we come from That's please don't, judge don't, please, please don't think i'm holier than now because i'm not but i know that there comes a point in life where where the things again that you used to do you shouldn't be doing anymore amen. there comes a point in life that you ought to be a new creature in god That's and right. people can't call on you because they know you've changed That's amen right. the, right. the, the normal people you know let's let's just be honest that little black book that some of y'all still have you know, you calling on different people. What are you? What are you calling on them for if they're not Christians? Yeah. Are you calling to witness to them? Are you just calling, you know, to kick it with them? The difference is, is that again, once you come into relationship, the black book goes away. Yeah. People fall off because they don't want your God. They don't want to change right now. And then you have some people that still hangs around the church in religion because they, they just feel good. Church makes them feel good. You know, they want to do better, but they're not there yet. And that's OK. But they do have to understand that you can't stay stuck there. Right. I, I remember a preacher preached years ago. He preached, you know, going to hell by way of the church. I mm. said, "Woo, that's a deep subject right there. <laughs> going to hell by way of the church. What do you mean? Because you were in religion. You were coming to church, you were clapping your hands, you were helping out around the church, but your heart was far from God. Mm -hmm. And we got to make sure that our hearts are right, saints of God. We got to make sure that we are growing in God because I refuse to. <clears throat> and, and, and the other thing is don't miss heaven because of me. That's right. Don't miss heaven because you saw somebody else act up. You saw that pastor fall from grace or that sister fall from grace. Don't you miss heaven because you you looking at people and putting them on a pedestal like, well, I thought they were saved because they not, you know, I forget this church thing. Nah. Now, see, when you quick to say that type of thing, I question people's relationship with That's God. That's an excuse. Because there's no way if yeah. my bishop or anybody fall that that's going to make me not want to serve God. Yeah. And that's why you have to know God for yourself. That's right. You have to know God when everything else around you is falling apart. Preach like it. this pandemic, you got to know that God is on your side. That's you got to right. know that who God is in this pandemic. Amen. You can't go with the, with, with, with the popular folks. Like my bishop used to preach a lot of times. He said, there's a lot of popular people on Broadway. 
And then he came from the scripture, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Mm -hmm. A lot of popular people on Broadway, but where is the few people that's willing to take the narrow path? That leads to heaven. Glory to God. Those people have relationship. That's Those right. people are not worried about being in the popular contest. I'm right. worried about who's my friend or who's not my friend. No, I just want to please Jesus in all I say and do because I have relationship with him. And when you have relationship, Jesus, God will put people in your life who's supposed to be there, That's right. whether it be for permanently or for seasonal. Mm -hmm. But God puts people in your life that's supposed to be there. God hooks up your whole world, you know, right. according to his will. That's so right. it's important that you understand the difference between religion and relationship and make sure you get relationship. That's Praise right. God. Amen. And you have to understand when we're talking about religion versus relationship, if you are stuck in religion, you can be like everybody else. Uh -huh. People who are religious tend to gamble. They don't mind going to casinos and you know, even though God does not really promote gambling in the Bible, you know, they, they, they find, they say, oh, that's just one of those things. It's not hurting nobody. It's okay to gamble, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people who are religious, they'll curse you out when they get mad <laughs> because they don't know how to really express themselves without cursing. Not mm -hmm. saying that everybody's not going to let one, you know, right. fly every now and then because, you know, folks can get on your nerves, mm -hmm. okay? People tend to, uh, how do I say this? Get under your skin. Mm -hmm. You know, you ever had somebody just, just, just get under your skin? Mm -hmm. You know, and and get on your last nerve, and mm -hmm. you can't borrow another nerve from somebody else. You know, <laughs> you're gonna have those moments like that. You know, then you got people who claim to know Jesus while simultaneously drinking alcohol, smoking dope. You know, doing everything you can name: lying, cheating, being deceitful, cheating on the taxes. You know. Cheating on the on the clock in and clock out on the job, you know, finding ways to try to cut corners. Mm -hmm. But but you say, oh, I I know God. No, mm -hmm. you know about God, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know you you you're publicly professing to be saved, right? And you're privately living a life that's on God. My God, my God, keeping my God. a lot of secrets. Come on, Pastor. Come on, come on. And always making excuses. Uh huh. For their sins, right? That's Religious right. folks, they tend to pray, and there is no evidence they they have a connection with God. But you see them with their hands together praying. But while the true saints of God, the true people who 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 have a relationship, they pray, and the connection gets revealed. That's good, and that's key. Hallelujah. Amen. The, re, the 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 connection gets revealed. Uh -huh. It gets revealed by the way they pray. It gets revealed by the way they talk. Uh -huh. It gets revealed by the way their prayers get answered. Yes. It gets revealed by the way they walk mm -hmm. each and every day. Yeah. Because the best sermon you'll ever preach mm -hmm. won't be behind a pulpit. That's right. It'll be how you live your life out. That's right. Because you have a true relationship with him. Yeah. Religious folks get upset and all bent out of shape and, and worked up into a, a lather uh -huh. and get their panties all in a bunch when <laughs> God is not talking to them. Come on, come on. But people who have a relationship with God mm -hmm. and understand his loving kindness mm -hmm. and who he is and how he moves mm -hmm. can still be faithful yes. even when God is silent. Come on. Says, what happens when you've been touched by the presence of the Lord? Mm. What happens when you have been Ooh. touched? By the presence of the Lord. We sit here. <laughs> <laughs> we sit here, glory to God, and you realize your life has been changed and you, you focus in on your gifts. You focus yeah. in on your, your talents, what God has done for you, praise the Lord. And so I'm kind of just giving Pastor a moment to uh, go ahead and uh, talk about it. But I just thought about it. We sit here. When you've been touched by God, why? Because he pushes you to the next level, to the next dimension, and you answer the call. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can say so much, but go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> in Matthew, excuse me, in Mark chapter number eight, mm -hmm. there's a blind man, mm -hmm. and Jesus leads him out of the city and touches him. Yes. On his eyes. Mm -hmm. And then he asks the man a question. Uh, he says, uh, can you see? He says, mm -hmm. and the man looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Mm. After that, Jesus put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. Mm. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Yes, yes. When you have been touched by the Lord, mm. 
He straightened some things out for you. Come on, Pastor. Come on. When Come you on. have been touched, Woo! Woo! He, he, he smooths out your rough places. Mm. When you have been touched by the Lord, he brings peace Come on, Pastor. during a time of confusion. He gives you courage in place of fear. Yes, God. <laughs> and the Bible says, you know, he'll give you beauty for ashes. Yeah. He'll give you uh, a joy. Yes, come on, Pastor. I mean, I mean, yeah. he'll give you so many things. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And, and you have to understand that this is like a transition. Yes. Me, a transaction mm -hmm. that's talked about in the Bible, where it says, uh, you know, when, when we have a commitment to the Lord, uh huh, and God, He says, you know, it's it's great gain. Yes, yes. To be committed to the Lord. Uh huh. Great gain. It's great gain. Yes. Just just to know God. Uh-huh. It's a great gain great in your gain. life. Yes. Hallelujah. Even like, like when it talks about in Matthew chapter 8, verse number 3, Jesus touched a man who was who had leprosy. And it said immediately. Immediately. Hallelujah. He was healed. Yes, God. In Mark chapter 5, verse 29, we all remember the woman with the issue of blood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She touched the hem of his garment. Yes. Uh huh. And straightway, straightway, she was healed. She was made whole. Yes, because God. You go from being hopeful mm -hmm. to being complete. Yes. You go from being fractured mm -hmm. to being made whole. Uh huh. You go from being sick yes. to being healed. Uh -huh. You go from being addicted. Come on, Pastor. To being delivered. Yes. You go from being stagnated. Uh huh. To being, to, to having a breakthrough. Yeah. Ultimately, uh huh. When you move from religion to relationship, yes. In religion, mm -hmm. God can't really touch you because you haven't yielded yourself. Yeah. You haven't made yourself available. But My when God. you enter into what's called relationship, uh -huh. then the fruit of the spirit begins to show up. Yeah. That's talked about in Galatians five twenty two and twenty three. Uh huh. Where it says, okay, now you we can see on you. Love, joy, yeah. peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, real faith, meekness, and temperance. We mm -hmm. see things going on in you that we did not see before because now there's a change mm -hmm. taking place. When you move from religion to relationship, it's like the the the, the cocoon. Uh huh. Come on, Pastor. And, and now you're getting ready to become a butterfly. Uh huh. God is going to take your ugly situation and turn you into something beautiful. Yes, Lord. God is going to take the chaos of your life Ooh, and make it you, appear Jesus. to be a canvas mm. upon which he gets to draw the future. Yes, yes. He gives you the opportunity to speak into the future. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can prophesy over yourself. Yes, God. I will have that job when I go in there for the interview. Yes. I will be the next person in line for kidney donations. Yes, I Lord. will be the next person to be healed. Yes, My Lord. eyes are partially blind now, but if it is the will of the Lord, I will see. I will see. I, I got more month than money, but I have all that I need in Jesus. Yes, you got to start speaking this thing. Speak it. And if you don't say nothing, Come on, you're not going to see nothing. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Hello? Come on. Come on. I said, if you don't say nothing, mm. you're not going to see nothing. Mm. Your speech. Thank you. The, the Bible clearly tells us it is not that which goes in. Come on. Come on. That defileth the man. Yes. It's the speech that cometh out. Yeah. This is what defiles a man. Yeah. It's not what you say when you're around everybody that's praising and, and, and worshiping the Lord. It's what you say when you're by yourself. Yes. yes. It's what you say when you're feeling depressed. Come on. Come on. Come it's on. what you say when you're feeling a little bit disenchanted and discontented Ooh. and discombobulated by your personal predicaments yes. stuck in, 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 in your situation, not understanding that there is something better, but you didn't call it into existence. You said, woe is me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. you, you said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Mm -hmm. You said, my money goes in one pocket and out of the other. Mm -hmm. Versus, mm -hmm. the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right. I have all that I need. The earth is the Lord's. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes. The blessings of my the God has a cattle on a thousand hills, which yes. means I'm rich. Yes. I might not look like it now, uh -huh. but I'm rich. Jesus. And you declare it over mm. yourself. Yes. Every time doubt comes in, you say, 
I am chosen, chosen to, to be blessed. blessed. Yes. Every time discouragement tries to come in, yes. you say, I am chosen, chosen to be blessed. I am chosen to be blessed. Every time you Thank have you, doubt Jesus. creeping up in your mind, yes. you say, I am chosen I to am be blessed. Chosen.